Who needs how you? Okay, so thank you for continuous tolerance to me and the course. Uh, please log into your MATLAB facilities and download the little script that was sent to you just uh, a couple of minutes ago. And we are ahead of schedule. We are ahead of ourselves. In previous years, this uh, meeting was scheduled after the MATLAB skills are presented. So uh, let's assume that you already know what, uh, how to operate this uh, software and just make a little connection between your MATLAB skills and recent homework that you have submitted, uh, homework too. So I will speak a little bit more um, what to do, how, how, to, how to interpret, but I have a little challenge and problem in front of myself. I have no idea how to credit you for today's assignment. So I, I should be creative, just. Uh, it's, it's not an assignment in a true sense, it's more like getting acquainted with this little code, running it. Maybe uh, we can agree on making a little report in PowerPoint what, what you did today as, as, we, as we do lab reports and it, it will be created so that you do not think that your time here is wasted only for curiosity. So the uh, script should work. You should, you, you, uh, you should formulate it as a .m MATLAB file and, and run it. And um, we will chat what does it do? How does it work? And uh, maybe the minimalistic thing, uh, what you can do by the end of the meeting is to add comment to each line or to each significant non-trivial line explaining what, what it does. Uh, and maybe it, it will be enough. If you want to, to do more things, there are a uh, couple of other things. One can um, copy make screenshots of images and put them into PowerPoint and also send, send to me. And I think it will be more than enough. If you are really, really curious, if you have nothing else to do, which I doubt, you can try to add modules to convert uh, this script into things that generates movie and upload it to YouTube and send the link. But I think we will be fine without it. Okay, and if, if this sounds reasonable, you can proceed forward without consulting with me, without listening. Just uh, learn what this code is doing, add comments sent to me and, and, and depart. Um, I see it is possible to do much quicker than I will formulate the story. So what is going on? What was our recent homework that you all have successfully sub submitted and completed? We were trying to predict future, right? And on this way, we practiced a conversion of the bell shape wave packet from the real space into space of momentum, into like set of expansion coefficients. 
right? So it is what you were doing uh, as a part of the homework. And then in class, we did convert the expansion coefficients back into Cartesian space of real of actual positions and then added time dependence. The script that is distributed doesn't have time dependence yet. We can edit uh, if everything will go really quick, we can insert time dependence at, at the end of the meeting or next time, but this is not the main thing. Main thing is to uh, make sure that everyone feels comfortable. Maybe you, you already do, but make uh, everyone is super comfortable in converting an object like a function to set of discrete set of expansion coefficients and then converting it back to the real space. So what this uh, script is doing, it replaces us as uh, little practitioners of math and uh, Fourier transform and numerically converts uh, bell shape into expansion coefficients and then converts it back. So by practicing this script and watching what, what it does, we should remove last doubts in this procedure. So if um, you were not feeling comfortable with Fourier transform either for this uh, step function and cosines or with uh, last question about this bow shape, I hope and believe that practicing the script will uh, remove possible questions that you didn't ask, but you, you may still have inside yourself. So um, I'm going to demonstrate uh, the script on, on, on the screen. Check if we all agree on the main principle, what it means and how it works. And then uh, probably you will just uh, run it and try to add comments to your, to your best understanding. So, uh, and if, if you want maybe adding some figures into PowerPoint. Okay, so uh, were you able to run the script by now? Did it stop right right away? So it, it made like a little spiral and then stopped. So basically you need to hit space 60 times or even, even larger number of, of times. So uh, I'm going to share, uh, share screen and uh, do a little introduction of this uh, other thing. Okay, so reading script is, is very boring. Let's uh, do it from the beginning. So I'm opening a new figure. Running the script and, and probably it is what, what you see um what do you see on your screens like a spiral which uh, has larger radius in the in the uh center and smaller radius as we go away from center right so um there are two things uh, defined here. One is uh, the phi naught, which is a bell shape. You recognize it exponential of, uh, with a power of x minus second, right? And uh, another thing is uh, phi k, which looks like a plane wave, right? So if you multiply them, then uh, this three-dimensional thing is a uh, multiplication of plane wave by uh, by the bell shape. Make sense? So the uh, let me stop it just a second. Uh, put. So here is a bell shape, right? 
and uh, if I do port uh, three, of We will have a infinite spiral, right? Now, uh, if we multiply these two uh, functions, if we multiply the bell shape times uh, the spiral, we will get the spiral uh, plane wave enhanced in the middle and declined uh, as we go away from the center, right? So if, if this is stored in the variable AA, you'll get this, this shape. Why do we need this thing in the relation to your previous, uh, to your completed homework? The expansion coefficients are obtained by convolution of the function that of our interest is this bell shape with plane waves of different frequencies, right? So if we want to mimic homework exercise, we need uh, many things, but at least two uh, to focus right, right now. We need plane waves with different density of fringes, right? And second, we do need to integrate this product. Does it make sense? So you multiply uh, our function of interest, bell shape times uh, the plane wave, and then you integrate over X. And as a result, you get expansion coefficient that correspond to certain frequencies, certain wavelengths. Make sense? Okay, so um, here is um, a little cycle that scans through different frequencies. And here this uh, wave uh, vector is plugged as a density of fringes in this uh, spiral, in this plane wave. And then this uh, multiplication is practiced again and again. And then later, it uh, so it is plotted. And then one uh, computes the expansion coefficient. So the command pause tells like, stop whatever you do until the host of this computer hits uh, enter or space. So um, as we go through this uh, cycles, the density of fringes will change and the expansion coefficients will be computed. So let me, let me run it. And now I uh, hit enter again, again, and again. And you see, the image becomes less and less dense. Okay. And at some point, uh, it's uh, only one revolution or even less. And at some point, uh, let me rerun it. Stop and run once again. At some point, uh, you can see that the curl of this uh, fringes changes direction. Yeah, about here. So right now it looks like only real part, no, no real and imaginary. And after that, it will start revolving in the opposite direction. So this means that we scan uh, momenta 
corresponding to movement forwards and backwards, positive and negative. And after and now uh, they become to be uh, fringes become more and more dense. Denser, 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 denser. So after this uh, exercise is done and this pose is uh, made only for um, benefit of us as humans. So we see what, what happens. If we just need to compute expansion coefficients, we can uh, percent this uh, pause command and uh, things will go immediate. Now, uh, after it is done, one can plot this expansion coefficients as a function of this uh, momentum. And basically this one is numerical form of your numerical answer to your homework, right? So you get bell shape as function of momentum and uh, one can speak about the width and, 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 and such. So uh, after this is done, the next thing is to check whether our hypothetical statements were correct, whether we really get anything useful out of it. And the best way, one of the ways to uh, check that we did something useful is to convert this expansion coefficients back into the real Cartesian uh, function. So what we, what we need to do is to take expansion coefficient multiplied by a spiral and add it to the final destination function so let's so we define a uh, wave function over, over again and now we multiply the plane wave, which is defined as a complex spiral everywhere, times uh, this expansion coefficient. Uh, and then at each step of the cycle, um, we can plot the resulting function. So if we do not cycle over all plane waves with all expansion coefficients, we will see only uh, one of the spirals, same as, as, as later. But then as we add together more and more of the spirals of, of different fringes and, and different amplitude because of the expansion coefficient, the hope is that we will reconstruct our original bell shape with uh, um, some level of precision. So, um, and one can see there is also pause uh, command just for us humans so that things that do not evolve so quickly. So if I uh, hit space, it shows uh, the It shows our original function that we want to reproduce. And then uh, the result of summation of uh, several expansion coefficients and plane waves. So uh, here it's just, um, we are looking on the real part, but imaginary part is, is also available here. And you see there are, there are these fringes. So if you have only a couple of terms in this expansion, it's still a spiral. But if you go further, so right now it looks, they all look uh, similar. But uh, as we go through, you see the central spiral, uh, central uh, coil starts to expand. 
the side parts of the coil start to decrease. And as we go forward, uh, there will be, uh, it is expected to have less and less imaginary portion. Still go forward. So now you see the real part is looks a little bigger than imaginary. And as we go forward, it comes closer to this uh, uh, real Gaussian shape. So we're producing it, its width. And uh, you see a real part changes from zero to six, imaginary part uh, changes from uh, minus 0.6 to plus 0.6. So it's already negligible. And if you keep um, going forward, the imaginary part is coming to 10 minus 16. And um, real part is um, not ideally coinciding because uh, we, well, I cannot lay my fault on your shoulders because I didn't practice normalization. Therefore, there is an uh, error in absolute value, but the functional shape is reproduced uh, in the in the reasonable way. So, uh, let me invite you to uh, practice it. Uh, just enjoy how things are, are going, and then try to make uh, you know how to do comments. You just uh, put percent and tell us. Here is my comment. It is stopped until any k is hit. You, you don't need to be so uh, long in each uh, thing, only comment essential things. So let's, let's do this little practice and uh, maybe a couple of screenshots to your PowerPoints. And I will be making visits and circles uh, uh, to each of you to, to check how things are going. Any any quick questions right now? Okay, if not, I'll, I'll start one-to-one uh, uh, -one visits. So is this first part the same as that, but that just has the the overlaid um, bell curve? Mm -hmm. And for, for this little uh, exercise, we have plenty of time, so do, do, do not rush. If you, if you enjoy running and watching, it, it, it's, it's, it's okay. We can select rotation by this little circle. All things are good. Mm 
this book. Yeah, okay, looks great. Yeah. You already. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Thank you. Cool well, things to do. So, uh, just in the text of the of the code, you see how here after symbol of percent you can type uh, type anything you like, and okay. it will not affect how the pro program is functioning. So uh, here. Yep. Yeah. Put percent and then type anything you like. Oh. It just keeps spacing. Okay, let, let me try. I, I, I don't know what, what is going on, but uh, um, window. What's the name of, the, of this code? How do you bring it up? Just bring it up once. Oh, this one. No, no, the, the text of the... Oh, the email that you had? Uh -huh, but uh, can you bring up the text of the, of the script? Oh, yeah. This one? Uh -huh, and then in the MATLAB, uh, did you save it under the specific name? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay, okay, it. okay. So what we need to do, let's do... Oh, just save it under... New script. Then... Uh, Maybe and then give it some reasonable name, yeah. like and then you see it's here. Yep. If you want to run it over again, you can just call it by name. Oh. I can so, uh, make this rotation just inspect it. It looks and uh, one can uh, type. And then send this file after you add comments to it. Okay. Okay. Does it work? Okay. Okay. Oh, that, that, that. So. New script now. Uh, can you please paste text of the script for me? Email right here. Okay, and now we can save it. There's some reasonable name. And uh, in the mm, 
users and you, you prefer to work in this directory. Mm-hmm. Documents, MATLAB, and here, desktop, plus cam. Okay. Let's save it as a different name. File, save as. Yep. Okay, yeah, thank you. So it's here, and you can call it by name when we when we call it, it should start. Uh, putting some stuff here. Space, space, space. And then it starts, so it, it, it did show this um, expansion coefficients with this bars. And now it tries to re- it starts to reconstruct this black line by this uh, dashed red. So it adds together more and more and more free waves. And uh, as we look through, right now, the, by the end, red and uh, the uh, solid and dash line should co- coincide. Similar. And we see that the real part is bigger than imaginary. And if you keep. The black one is the real part. Um, Red, uh, so the, the, the black one is a regional function, bow shape, and the uh, this red dashes is something that we got as a result of uh, um, Fourier transform forwards and backwards. So basically, that's it. And now uh, we should meditate and explain not each line, but major major lines that are responsible for this. So for, for for making this uh, images just scroll through uh, the lines and, and explain what, what they mean. Like, uh, And space later it is shown as so I'll, I'll make a comment to, to everyone and just show an example. Here it's plain wave. Real and Yes. So, um, I understood your question and I know what to answer. I'm just trying to find the best way to explain it. So, um, Yeah, 
squared of minus one, right? Now in the plane wave, we have exponential of this imaginary unit. So if we, um, comma real okay the spiral or we can erase this one and do it over So there are three axes. So we can um, So here is x is just coordinate, and then uh, this function has two components, real and imaginary. If we and our original bow shape, it it just doesn't have anything. Uh, it's only real, yes, yes. And well, then the yes. And then we multiply the multiply this uh, imaginary uh, with this plane wave times the bow shape. And now this thing has both real and imaginary. And then uh, we perform this sum means so this uh, CK sub i is integral of product of this function of, of, of the space. And hypoth hypothetically, it, it may have both real and imaginary parts. But if we let's add this thing into the code, it will look better. How do you do copy? Control C. Then to yeah, this one. So if you put real part, we see something large. If we put imaginary, we see it is 10 to the minus 17, it's almost as nothing. So uh, the expansion coefficients will be also real because uh, the imaginary parts of this um, 
positive and negative components of this uh, spirals will compensate each other and to the result we, we get only uh, real contribution. Okay, so please try just making comments and maybe a couple of screenshots into the PowerPoint to the level it you can do without much concentration, just a little bit. So here is a little uh, example of how I probably would do this assignment myself. Um, one can either type comments in the, as with putting percent and sign in, in, in the text of the code, or one can do like a little supplemental uh, page with, uh, instead of interpreting code, uh, writing the equations and then telling at which line and by which symbol uh, they are implemented. So it's um, both way are, are fine. And uh, uh, does this thing make sense? Okay, so you have the original function, you do have 
twin wave, you have their product that later we, we put, and then you have this uh, computation of expansion coefficients where integral is implemented by making summation and multiplying by uh, step along dx. Does this look easy and uh, clear or anyone is not happy or need more more comments? If, if you feel a little discomfortable about this notation, just to let me know. Everyone is okay. Uh, Ola, okay, yeah, thank you, Nate. Oh, okay, yeah, please keep going and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll continue making visits. What, what is not clear there? You, you've told that. Yeah, I, I'm just a little tired that song, but I think now that I look at it, I think it should be good. Okay. Yeah, just more like just hard to focus. I'm just feeling a little tired since it's a long day. Okay, okay, um, yeah, I completely understand. Yeah, <laughs> but for the most part, though, I understand. Okay. It just looks a little. It's a bit complicated, though. Uh, it, it, yeah. It's long and exhausting. Yeah. It's not yeah. too much challenging, but yeah. it's like longer derivations that we typically have in other yeah. courses. I mean, it, it seems, look, I think it's okay, but I think a lot of the different right, symbols, and that's probably confusing me with the, all the Greek letters. Mm -hmm. That's probably what getting me to feel a little lost. But for but I think once I understand it, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Okay. But it should be good. Thank you. Okay. Yes, please. Like for each line, you want us to write something? Yes. Oh, and if you think that some line are, are trivial, you can skip it. Uh, okay, so like, so uh, imagine you will teach this course, and you want uh, your students to understand what the code is doing. Okay, so like something like this, like max of the loop, mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. So yes, yes. Uh, it's it's not. I guess I'm kind of like maybe it's, it's it's not max of the loop but range of uh, position but okay. you, you are on the right path you're doing the right thing and i'll probably as a, i'll try to do the same assignment just typing something on the screen okay. so that you can compare what you do and what i'm doing and then okay. maybe it will make more sense okay. but do not take me as a as a good example you, a lot of you can do more brilliant comments i'll, I'll just <laughs> uh show general direction okay hold off clear uh visual space uh what is l I don't know what is L. Um, so probably it, it sets up the scale. Let's scale for real space. Um, set range for real space position 
will change minus x max to what x max um, dx increment in position space distance between three points um, set up this grid variable for coordinate variable coordinate sigma set set up with parameter what is the bell is the bell shape set up <coughs> excuse me bell function node normalization is skipped ff assign the variable for for the final result here we will store the function that instructed back after forward and backward for Uriah transforms K max. I don't know. Oh, maximal momentum, maximal momentum. Okay, maximal momentum. Grids. Number of grid points in momentum space. Step size increment of momentum set initial value of the count counting variable uh, I think you do something things much better than I do I'm, I'm just and maybe what, what I'm doing is, is boring for you. It looks like I'm entertaining, more entertaining myself than, uh, than, than you guys. Um, okay, uh, set, set up the cycle over, over what? Over this read values of of momentum note note that uh, it covers both negative and positive values since electron can move forwards and backwards um, conversion of the discrete counter of the values 
to actual how by by the increment dk set up imaginary unit plane wave note it is a complex object It naturally has real and imaginary components. Um, function of interest. Bell and a plane wave which is uh, one of which is the one of the basis functions. Illustrating what is going to be integrated. Note we draw both real and imaginary parts. We can also put additional comments uh, like label, x label, x label, x label, x comma position, y label, Imaginary component, component Z label. Ah, not not imaginary. It's real. 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 Imaginary component. So expansion coefficient is obtained as integration, or one can say convolution of the function of interest and the basis function and the expanded coefficient may have both real and imaginary components so here we accumulate current version value current value of momentum into 
um, array. Int v o b useful for plotting all expansion shipments pause stop until the operator allows to go forward by pushing pushing space Print momentum and expansion. expansion. Okay. Screen. Increment of the counter. And save. I don't know if you enjoy this activity. Let me make uh, visits and check how, how you guys are doing. And I, I expect your writing will be much more interesting. <laughs> How are how is k and the just straight up momentum different? Isn't k the wave number? Are yes, um, um, I'm making this error through all my life. Uh, I'm making um, wave vector and momentum equal in what I speak, but it is they are not. They differ by factor of h bar. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes. Uh, momentum and wave vector are proportional, and uh, the momentum equals to uh, wave vector multiplied by h bar. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah it's great it looks like you're you, you're ahead of what is on on the board Did you, uh, did you? don't give me that much credit <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i really like it you're basically done right so uh if you have uh steam time and energy you may in, uh, do a couple of screenshots and put them in, in powerpoint yes and uh, then let me know if you want more entertainment or you are ready to go <laughs> okay So you're, everyone is ahead of me. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Very good, very good. Yeah, keep going, try uh, uh, this thing and then we'll compare. Oh. So let's go to the command window.
hit enter just so that or control C to stop uh, the code. Control C. Oh. Okay, and let's uh, uppercase II enter. So it is imaginary unit. Now let's type the lowercase i, enter. So uh, the i is just a counter variable. It's not imaginary unit. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the, the, the rest seems reasonable to me. I just picked. Okay, yeah. Things. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I enjoy what, what you're writing. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So and cycle over different momentum values. In fact, different wave vector uh, values credit to Nate. Um, from here, we have completed computation of expansion coefficient. Here we visualize. Here we visualize what? Expansion coefficients. Expansion coefficient. As function of wave vector. Uh, note that imaginary part part is negligible for each of them. And maybe add labels as well. Uh, X label. Wave vector slash momentum. Y label. Y label. Just C, C sub K. Here's a comment if you stop until any K is hit. Okay. Uh, so hold off means wipe off, remove things from screen. Remove visual info from this graphical panel. Graphical panel. Uh, from now on. We reconstruct original 
funk as as a superposition of basis functions plane waves the result will be stored stored in the array ff i equals one reset counting var variable uh, cycle over grid points of momentum grid and again uh, I'm doing the same but lack of precision wave the wave vector tor no momentum moment so So we define plane wave once again. In line number 62. And then we set up, we practice uh, CK of X times expansion coefficient C of K in line. 63 but when 63 is more rich there we set up final answer let's call it maybe just f of x Here is we have a discrete summation of k c sub k times c k of x times delta k, and this can be represented as.
So uh, I hope you are way ahead of me. I'm just trying to do this baby steps just in case uh, there are doubts in, in any of you. So we do, uh, we reconstruct the function as like integral or summation of the basis functions for in waves times expansion coefficients. And this summation has uh, in this example, like 60 terms or 61 term. So um, plane wave is one value times appropriate expansion, then next uh, plane wave expansion. And then we add one more term and then continue summation. So to practice adding more and more terms, we can tell that at each iteration we have old value and then we increment the old value by, by a little addition. And then we kind of loop through repeating this, this procedure. So what it is what is uh, all the stuff is uh, assumed in, in line uh, 63. Constructively accumulating contributions from each plane wave towards final function note the larger the number of included basis functions the more accurate is the fi final function hold off what is hold off hold off is a uh, wipe um, wipe the the graphical information Okay, now prepare for several layers of graphical information. First layer. Um, K stands for black color of the line. Uh, one hyphen stands for solid line. Black solid presents the original function and serves serves as a reference point hold on keep graphical info from the previous command C 
second layer of graph. Real and imaginary parts. Real of the final function. Note that we put intermediate results when not all terms of the series are taken into account. Intermediate results are, are less accurate and show divergence from, from the reference point, reference uh, function. Divergence from reference function. Pause. Wait for operator to push any key. Increment of the car on team we able. And End of everything. Right. <laughs> so let me visit once again. So uh, after you done this, uh, maybe you can copy paste a couple of most rep representative images. Uh, I would do five. Original function, one of the plane waves, then one of the convolution from the first cycle, then uh, the um, set of expansion coefficients, and then one of the um, comparison between summation and, and original function. So like five uh, screenshots into PowerPoint, and then I think we are done. So I'll, I'll make a uh, visit, then uh, I'll probably try to do it if if you if you will be not done by this time, and, and then we should we should depart in peace. I think that's got a pretty simple explanation. Uh huh. <laughs> Most of it. Yep. Do you want the just send the file? Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And um, I do not exclude. Basically, I suspect that uh, you have brilliant math, math talent, and uh, this simple programming exercises look boring. So, in some sense. This little programming is a replacement of uh, math derivations, and uh, for this relatively simple problem, it's not needed. Everything can be done by by pen and paper. But uh, as we progress through the course, very soon we will face such problems that cannot be done by pen and paper, and then this uh, boring, meticulous line by line coding and, and explaining what uh, it does line by line is the only way to get through. Because for, for um, uh, mass derivations, it's, uh, there is always uncertainty whether the problem will be solved or not. And with programming, it's kind of guaranteed that no matter how hard the, the problem, it will be solved to a certain level of precision. Okay.
Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Okay, yeah, thank you. Imaginary parts. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> so, do you have PowerPoint? Yes. Third screenshot. Third new slide. Insert. Insert. Okay, I should have click on that.
done. Maybe just add a little comments what, what, what is wrong. Like uh, two two products, the code with comments and uh, PowerPoint with a couple of uh, uh, snapshots. Um. Hmm? You want to combine it into PowerPoint? Yeah, 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 it's, it, it, it's reasonable. Um, example. Comments. Insert screenshot, uh, screen clipping. So Constructed. Black is original. Bell, bell function. Oh, done? Yeah, yeah, thank you for enthusiastic <laughs> contributions. Oh, done? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, see you on Friday. Yes. Yeah. No certain due date, but maybe before before Friday lecture. Really?
Odan. Thank you. Oh, then. <laughs> okay, do you just email you once we're done? Yes. All right. Yes, thank you. Good night.